turning everything off on my phone so nobody's calling me, and I think we're good to go. All right, here we go. Aloha, everyone. Welcome to Talk Story Unscripted. I'm Pete, and Doug's not here. Pray for him. He's not feeling too well today. But I'm here with a guest all the way from California. We've got John Wickham, uh, who's with us. John, welcome. Uh, thanks. Thanks. It's good to be here, and thanks for asking me to be part of it. Now, for those of you who don't know who John Wickham is, John, I guess the best way to say it is John is a, a, a guitar player extraordinaire. Uh, back in the day when I was a brand new believer and during the Jesus People Movement, whenever John was on stage, I got really excited. I'm sure a lot of us did. And he was part of that big Jesus People Movement, uh, pioneering uh, many, uh, within many of the uh, uh, bands at that time. The first time I saw you, John, you were playing with The Way. And then you ended up playing with Parable. And then you were sitting in with a lot of bands after that, too. But let's back up a bit. And let's talk about you, John, when you first encountered a guitar. Do you remember that moment? Oh, sure. It was, uh, I was 10 years old. It was in 1964 when the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. And I think myself and many th- hundreds of thousands of other preteens wanted to play guitar. And so uh, that's when I first started and plugged away at it. And I was pretty driven into it because it was an escape uh, from, you know, social pressures and things like this and all the turmoil that was going on in the 60s uh, for uh, kids, you know, growing up and things like this. And it was kind of a, there was a roughness in the school I was going to. It definitely had that element. So I, I just, I just kind of dove in, and so did a lot of my friends. Wow, that's great. And, and was that uh, that first guitar? What was it? When you, what did you, what did you have? An acoustic guitar? Or did you have? <laughs> did you go straight to electric? What was it? I think the first one was, um, I forget the brand. It was like St. George or something like that. I think it cost twelve, twelve to fourteen dollars. I think. Oh my goodness. Uh, brand new and the strings were you know i don't know about a half an inch off the neck not quite but <laughs> here's my philosophical question for the whole uh half hour is did the guitar pick you or did you pick the guitar <laughs> boy i i don't know i mean i don't i don't know how to answer that i just know that when i was 15 well i i was I'm kind of a glasses half full kind of guy. Um, And I don't have a death wish. I was never, I don't even know if I've ever been depressed. I probably have and didn't know it, but I don't think so. I don't get depressed. But when I was, before I became a Christian as a, as a young teenager, I saw no purpose in, in, in this life. I mean, I remember asking my dad, why should I go to college if I'm just going to die? It just made no sense to me. And that was a big deal asking that of my parents because we didn't confront our parents. I mean, and I felt like I was putting them on the spot and that was hard for me to do. And he, mm. he said, well, it's for the people that are going to live after you. And I didn't tell him this, but my immediate thought was, well, they're just going to die. I mean, I saw no purpose. And so all I wanted to do, all I told my friends is after high school, I was going to go to Chicago and play the blues. <laughs> which which I thought sounded cool, but even when I said it, I felt so profoundly empty. I just wow. I just thought, uh, whatever. And so one of my friends, lifelong friend, Alex McDougall, uh, and his family, his whole family, they were kind of like a second family to me. In mm. 1969, there was a, a Billy Graham crusade in Orange County, California, and he received the Lord at and he played drums and um and he stopped playing drums because he didn't think a christian could play drums at least the type music we were playing and i didn't know any of this i because Mm. he wouldn't tell me i didn't even know what a matthew mark luke and john were i i knew nothing and um but i respected my friends and he invited me to calvary to church and i just I didn't have anything against God. I just never thought about him, which blows my mind now. Such blindness, such Mm. darkness. I'm just like, it was crazy when I think about it. And so 
anyway, uh, we had a lot of music friends and uh, back then there were no synthesizers, right? So, right. Um, so this one friend played a Hammond B3 organ and what he used to carry his Hammond B3 around was like a 1956, 57, 58, whatever, hearse. <laughs> and, it, and so we took his organ out of the hearse. We all piled in his hearse to go to Calvary, to go to church. And I'm just like, what do we, I didn't even know what was going on. And one, another friend was going who had gone the week before he was in the car, the vehicle, and he played harp, you know, blues harp. And so he, he just said, what if we get in an accident? I just got to get there and raise my hand. And I'm like, raise your oh. hand. What's that? So anyway, I received the Lord that night and didn't know anything. I just knew, I, I just, I just went forward. And it was the next morning or the morning after I got this incredible desire, like out of nowhere to read the Bible. I couldn't get enough. I'd come home from school. I'd read the whole book of Romans before dinner. The next night, Philippians and Ephesians. Next night, the whole book of Acts. The first book I started with was the book of Revelation. And, oh, that's, that, that's a good I, one. <laughs> I wanted to see what, how it ended. And um, <laughs> I... I I didn't understand a thing, mm. but I was overwhelmingly blessed. I just was so aware of God's presence and of his reality. Mm. And so uh, I, I didn't play in front of people for two years because it was such a, I just, I just didn't. And people would tell me, well, you got a gift, you should use it. And I just knew that if it was meant to be, it wasn't then because I just knew God wanted me to grow in him and be in his word. I kept practicing by myself. I didn't stop playing, yeah. just not in front of people. Too much of an ego thing. Mm -hmm. How many weird faces you could make when you bend a note. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And how yeah. fast. All this just such, I didn't, you know, <laughs> it was so ridiculous. But anyway, <laughs> and so, uh, I graduated. Uh, 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 semester early from high school because I had enough credits, which I didn't know I did. I just got this letter. So long story short, I went to Europe for a couple of months. With I was 18. I went with a guy who was 17. Had an amazing time. I could talk about that so long. It was unbelievable what God did. But I came back, and that's and and my friend who took me to Calvary Al was in an early Maranatha music band called Selah. And at that yeah. time, there, Mayor Nothing Music was having a meeting every day of that week. And he said, you want to come? I said, okay, sure, because it was a Bible study. And I went, and I was holding the door open for Dana, who was in the group The Way. And yeah. he goes, hey, what's your band doing? I said, I'm not in any. He said, how'd you like to be in ours? So that's how it happened. And oh, my I, goodness. I, just, I got in as the bass player because they needed one. And I never played bass before, but I knew the notes. And it was simple country, acoustic-y, Crosby, Stills, and nash -y type stuff. So I could do that stuff. So anyway, that's how it started. That's amazing. I mean, that's, to be honest with you, when I, uh, when I was with the, uh, when I first started going to church, I was fully into Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, you know, the whole country rock thing. So sure. coming into Calvary Chapel and you guys are up there playing, and then you start, at that point, you were playing lead guitar and, you know, you start ripping through some uh, lead part. And that just did it for me. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I was kind of, you know, say, I was kind of teetering and tottering in my faith. I grew up in a Christian home, but I really didn't, I didn't feel like I was connecting with that. But coming into Calvary and into those concerts, it just really spoke to me. And the songs were amazing. And, and of course, yeah. the message afterwards, you know. And then I just, I gave my life to the Lord. Yeah, so that's pretty so cool. Good. So yeah. good. Wow. So, so tell us a, a, a bit more about that. So you joined the band and, and you guys start playing. And, and you went out to different various areas doing outreaches and whatnot with the band. What was that like for you? over the top amazing. It's hard to put into words. Um, at that time, there was no, um, there were two contemporary Christian radio stations in the world. One was in, <laughs> there was, one was in Idaho and one was in Santa Ana. 
And uh, there were no Dove Awards. They didn't exist. There was no contemporary Christian music magazine. There, there was nothing like that. There was probably um, 25, 20, maybe, uh, Christian, contemporary Christian music CDs that came out a year, maybe less, in the whole country. And yeah. it just was the birth of it. And um, everything was new and everything was about it was about jesus and sharing the lord and so i mean i remember one of the first things we did is we went on a, a six-week tour in uh it's before dodge maxi vans were even made it was this chevy van we didn't pull a trailer we had a serwin vega pa system with two columns on each side and they were pretty big and we put them in the van we put all the drums all the guitars all the amps luggage for eight people and a baby and eight people and a baby in a van for six weeks. Oh my goodness. There wasn't one complaint in six weeks. I mean, we were just, our hearts, we just couldn't wait to get to tell people about the Lord. And so I didn't care if I played bass. I didn't care if I played kazoo at that point. We just, it was just so amazing. The doors that the Lord opened and, um, and, and we played all the time. And so, wow. yeah, it was such a, such a blessed time. And I think every chapter that God gives us in our lives, I mean, he's, he's done so much and let us be a part of so much, but there is so much ahead. I mean, life yeah. in the Lord is obviously has its challenges and we live in this world. We deal with the world, the flesh and the devil. Yeah. All of us do. All of us do, and and um, it's tough. But but my goodness, you know, I mean, David said, "If I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't even fear, because you are mm. with me." And the Lord is with us, and He has a plan. And um, and stop me if I talk too much, but I just want to yeah, say you're one, okay. more, one more thing here in Acts where Paul is talking to, uh, I believe it's when he's talking to the uh, elders from Ephesus, he, he says, I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. And he talked about my course, not someone else's, but God, but mine. God has a special plan for each one of us. Nobody can keep us out of his will but ourselves. No mm -hmm. record company executive, no spouse, no kids, no boss. It might seem that way, but God's big enough to keep us where it wants us. And, and that's, what I, that's what I've seen, even though I haven't wanted to be in every situation I've been in. I look back and I go, wow, God, thanks for hemming me in. Thanks yeah. for keeping me. Thanks for keeping me on my course, what, what yeah. you've determined my course to be, you know. So, Amen. A, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And you know what? What's interesting? You're telling your story about, you know, you're wondering where what is life all about, and even telling your dad, like you mentioned, you know, why am I even here, and you know, wanting to end, it, feeling like you should just end it all. Um, what's really interesting is that then when God blesses you, you end up going to play with Parable after the way, and you meet your wife Lisa, and then. You end up having three beautiful kids, Evan, Phil, and Jillian, and the talent keeps going. The music keeps going, which is such a beautiful thing. I mean, talk about that a bit. How does that feel for you to see your kids moving on and continuing to do, you know, use their talents, their gifts, and, and do what they're doing? Wow, it's, it's amazing. I think, I, think, uh, I think one of the one of the things that, that um, both Lisa and I have the, have the blessing of, of knowing and have experienced is how it's, how it, the, their journey. Um, there was no pushing down doors. There was no striving. There was no striving. There was, it wasn't like that. It was, it was slow and steady all the time. It was, um, you know, uh, Pastor, Pastor Chuck Smith used to say, um, you know, look at where God is blessing and do that. Just, you know, and then he also, he had a lot of things he said. Another thing was whatever you strive to attain, 
you have to strive to maintain. Amen. But if you let, but if you let God just work and open doors, um, you know, then it's it's His responsibility to bless as He sees fit. You know, and so I saw that. I saw that with Evan. I saw that um, with Philip. I see that in our daughter. Um, and and God just slowly but surely just you know. And man, it's blown our minds. The songs and the songwriting, it's way beyond what we did. I mean, we think the songwriting, it's crazy good. And the focus, <laughs> the focus and the uh, influence. And, you know, we were taught. Um, well, let me back up a little bit. Um, in the early 70s, when all these Dove Award things started, it, w- it seemed we we weren't sure about it. We being some of us around Maranatha music and early Calvary chapel days and stuff, we just weren't sure. And many years have passed since then. And uh, it, it, I don't even care about it. I mean, we were taught don't judge, but be fruit inspectors. And so early, early on, uh, Lisa and I, were doing Philip's email when he was trapped, you know, everything, because he needed the help. And we would answer it, and I'd see all this, and all this was pouring in were these changed lives with these mm. people being affected for Jesus. And, and I, I just, it was so fruitful. I just saw, I just saw people turning to the Lord. And so I, I don't care what style of music it is. I, I, doesn't matter i think there's room for all of it i mean there's different mm. size audiences for different styles <laughs> for Absolutely, sure Absolutely, yeah but man you know hey if that's where where the lord's leading someone you know just go for it and yeah uh, and share jesus and and yeah so you know i i have to tell you like i uh i eventually moved to australia i lived there over 20 years and uh i remember hearing about this guy, Phil Wickham. And I saw, as soon as I saw his name, I, I knew, oh my goodness, this must be John and Lisa's kid. And here he is playing. And that was my first experience, you know, hearing about Phil. And I thought, oh, this is really great, all the way in Australia. And it was just mind blowing. And it's, I, honestly, it's a privilege to sit here and talking with you and, and hearing how God has used you and, and what, what, you know, your attitude towards your walk of faith. I think that's really beautiful just to go with the flow. I totally agree with what Chuck says, you know, I mean, we need to, we need to realize that we just, we just, the, the Holy Spirit is what, what moves us is what direct directs us. So that's really awesome. But I got to ask you this yeah. in your house, in your household, John, you and Lisa being parents and these kids running around, what was that? What did you guys like sit around and, and play guitar all day long and, 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 uh, have worship services or what was going on there? What, what was amazing in your home? Uh, no, that wasn't going on. Um, uh, we definitely were connected. I mean, uh, we were leading in worship uh, with Pastor Chuck up at Calvary Costa Mesa for uh, just a month shy of 11 years. Before that, we were with Mike McIntosh from 81 to 85 at Horizon Christian Fellowship. Well, it was called Calvary Chapel san diego at the time changed its name and um and that's where uh the kids grew up was there and then at calvary costa mesa and our whole lives seemed to be seemed to be on those 17 acres up in costa mesa uh school church sometimes we'd go there on a day off just to play on the on the grounds there uh for the kids to play and um and honestly one of the biggest things i remember uh, with with the kids is 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 um, saying saying we're sorry for getting angry or for I mean we talked about everything <laughs> and and spent so much time with them before, before they're going to sleep and stuff like that musically Lisa felt super strong about Evan taking piano lessons when he was five years old wow. and uh, yeah and he he did that. And uh, he had a real intense teacher. Um, and so we wanted to give him a year off um, so he could ride his skateboard and just be a little boy. And after that, he wanted to get back to it on his own. 
And he looked at the notes on a page, like a secret message. That's what kept him pushing. He thought it was like a, he wanted to know what they said. So he tried to play them and he got, he got really good. And then he heard a Michael W. Smith instrumental piano song and he learned it by ear. And then he went off on playing by ear. Evans, and then he transferred everything to the guitar somehow. And he says I taught him, but I don't have any recollection of that. Um, um, and his, he is, oh my goodness, it, he's so anointed of the Lord. And he's pastoring, he and his wife, um, lead pastor at a church called Park Hill Church in downtown San Diego. And it's going amazing. Evan has a couple of CDs out. He's so good. And then Philip, after we moved down to San Diego area, um in 96 he didn't even pick up the guitar till after we moved down here and he did it because he was so alone which Mm. brings back memories for my situation but he he just picked it up and after about two or three seriously this two or three months he comes into the living room because dad i wrote this song and i went oh so i put down what i was doing and he played this song called give you my world which was the title song of his indie album Wow. And so I'm waiting for some cheesy part to come. Um, and it never came. And I'm just like, what in the world? And then right around the same time, within a week or two, he wrote Jesus, Lord of Heaven, um, which wow. was a worship song that's on one of his, it's on his indie album and one of his label albums. And mm. he just, it, you know, he'd be in his room four to five to six hours straight it sounds like an exaggeration but it wasn't he just strum and strum and play and learn all these songs and um he basically started because he wanted to be a part of the junior high worship team just to kind of play and he ended up leading it and um and so by that time and then anyway it just took off it slowly slow and steady it just took off and God just opened doors and he got counsel. We prayed together and, and he just walked through them. That's you awesome. Know. Yeah. That's so good. So now let's, we got to talk about your release here, your new album. It's called city light and you can pick up the album. There's information on the screen right now. So make sure you go check it out. As a matter of fact, if you go to John's website, which is on the screen, you can listen to three of the songs, once an instrumental, and then you've got one with Evan singing and one with, with uh, Phil singing. But who, do you have other people? So John, we know you're not a singer, but you're a guitar player. And so yeah. you've, got, you've got a few different people uh, singing on the album. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, it started out to be, uh, I, I did these songs for Lisa to do another album years ago. And <clears throat> she, if she, she told me, she goes, if I ever do another album, I want to pick the songs. I want Evan to produce it. I'd like it to be both of ours. Anyway, the fact is that excited me because she definitely has her taste and I'd love to see her. She's getting a little fired up actually recently to, to do it again. So I, I really hope she, does it because her songwriting is unique and great yeah. <clears throat> but i was just going to do it i took those some of those tracks and made them into instrumentals and then i got a whole bunch of new ideas and um five of the songs were actually songs that needed a singer and i sing like the guy in the fifth row i'm not a vocalist <laughs> no offense to any fifth row people but i <laughs> I'm just not. I anyway. So, so I thought, okay, well, I could have featured vocalists or guest vocalists, and um, on some of the songs. So that's what I did. And um, I had some friends, and I had family sing on them. And so, uh, and then Daryl Cook uh, played bass on all the stuff. Uh, he used to be in Mustard Seed Faith, and yeah. He's played with Johnny Rivers for, I don't know how many years. I, I don't even know if he still does. I don't know if he's still playing. I don't think so. But anyway, and uh, I know how he plays. I knew it was going to be solid and in the groove and it's what it was. And then um, I just was in the corner of our garage with um, 
with a keyboard and my guitars and um, just little by little, I just plugged away at it and knowing that I didn't have any time limit or I don't have a record deal or anything like that. It was, it's an indie album. So I just kind of worked on it like that. And I remember when I heard the first mix of the first song, I was pretty blown away. Um, it just came to life and I just thought, wow, I like this. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's okay to put out there. So, um, so anyway, and I really worked on the, um, uh, the guitar sounds. I mainly for the, I used a Strat on some stuff. I used a Gretsch, uh, Phillips Gretsch on, on one song. I, I did a thing. And then I used, uh, Mainly, I used an SG, a 61 reissue SG. Wow. And uh, that's what I used on most of the stuff, which is why I have it on the picture of the album cover, because I just wanted to give it props. I mean, nobody cares about that but me. But um, No, just... I, I care about it. I care about it. SGs are great. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, really, really worked hard on it and worked hard on the mixes. The guy who mixed was very willing for me to be there. And I made it. all these changes. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, it, yeah, I can't even tell you how many, how much I drilled down into just even a half a dB of this or dB of that. Oh, I yeah. Mean, everything, everything. I would just, so I'm glad it's done and, and um, out there. So it's good. Well, well, everybody who's watching this, make sure you go to the website and you can pick up, you can order a CD, you can uh, do it digitally. Uh, there's a lot of information on the website. So make sure you go and check out the music. It's awesome. I mean, uh, from what I've heard so far, I can't wait to hear the whole album. Just to, to close, I just want to ask you, what advice would you give to aspiring guitarists or musicians or artists? Well, I think, I mean, I think in terms of, of well, let me just put it this way. There's a scripture in Peter that says, if any man, and I think in terms of ministry, I think in terms of being led of the Lord and doing God's will. And so, there's a scripture in Peter that says, if any man ministers, let him minister with the ability that God has given so that God will be glorified. So I need to be who I am in Christ. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to try and be like somebody else or go, well, that's what they're doing. So I want to do it exactly like that. No. In Romans it says, he that ministers, let him wait on his ministering. And so, we, we wait before the Lord, we, you know, get direction from him and just minister with the ability God's given. And uh, just on a practical note, I know this is easy to say and hard to do because it takes, it took me years to do it and to think this way. But as far as just on a practical note, if you're playing electric guitar, just play what's best for the song and not try and do everything you've learned in in three and a half minutes or whatever because it's it just doesn't work and play what's best for the song which might be just putting strumming a chord and letting it go for two measures you know and that's hard to do when you want to when you want to play more you know so that's what i'd say yeah amen that's that's what i call being tasty you know, not yep. playing, you know, ridiculous. It's just being tasty, and that's really important. I agree with you. Thanks so much, John, for your time, and uh, and we really appreciate it, and we're looking forward to hearing your album and uh, playing some of those videos here on Kahlo TV. And until next time, everybody, aloha. Aloha.